Evening everybody. These are the five models from the five model Meccano Maker System Serengeti Safari set. We've got the Rhino which is the A model there. The next one I made was the Giraffe. Then the uh, Gazelle. I think it's a Gazelle. The Cat of some description. I'm guessing a Cheetah. Uh, lastly and arguably the best looking one anyway the Elephant. All quite pleasant looking models, some better than others, some do a little bit more than others, some were better builds than others, and we do have some issues with the build. I'm getting a bit fed up of saying niggles now because that's, I'm trying to be over kind I suppose, although still being honest, just trying to put it in a polite way if you like. There's been a few sets now where there's a, an issue with the build that may be major, like the LaFerrari. Did I mention that? Oh, well, I say I have. And uh, two little things, like on a couple of these models. Anyway, it's a bit crowded here with the five of them, so uh, we'll have a look at them one at a time. So here we are, folks, the Rhino, the A model from the set, and a decent representation, if you like. As I said, a bit skeletal, a bit robotic-like, uh, and I think makes it a little bit more... Interesting, I suppose, intriguing in in some ways. Uh, it has got a few features, like all the models. We've got moving legs, front and rear. Oh, can't really see that, can you? So I'll do it like that. And of course, the the bottom moves as well. Now, you might think I've got these a little bit stiff, and perhaps I have really. But the reason why I've done this, let's see the rear legs as well, is just so that when you do move the legs to a certain position they will hold that position that's purely why they're probably a little bit too tight um, yeah, I suppose, of course it is fairly new and they don't really move much uh, the tail moves a little um, there now one of the little niggles is that this is fixed here by one of these quick snaps and it means the whole of this can move quite easily where there's no need really. Um, the head moves as well uh, not so much though and there's a reason for that see, see the head moves up and down a little bit side to side at an angle better more than others and the reason for that is let's see if we can get in here yeah let's try that yeah you see the corner bracket in there that zinc part there well because it's got a bit of overhang there it actually catches the actual socket of the next one so what can happen is if you force it too much although these are a great fit you can take the head off like that it acts as a lever so that is um, not brilliant there's a lack of movement there but to be honest you could probably get away without the corner brackets although it wouldn't be so structurally sound down here uh, you could probably get away with not using those that give you more movement one other little thing regarding the uh, the build this more or less um, or in similar ways in fact I'll take his head off I know it looks a bit cruel uh, this happens in similar ways with some of the other models uh, you see here just there there's no washers or anything to space out the gap there take up the gap either side when you tighten the bolt so therefore this bolt is not that tight because it's causing these to pull in these uh, sort of triangular brace girders to pull in so that ain't brilliant I've got nothing in my notes to say there's uh, spare washers to put in or there isn't no spare washers, of course I could have just forgot to put that down. But uh, yeah, on the whole, not a bad looking model. No real issues uh, that uh, prevents the model from being enjoyed, uh, played with. Uh, everything goes together okay. But, and I suppose this goes for absolutely every model, you could probably see ways to improve things slightly. Now, a fairly reasonable looking model. 
In fact, they all are really. Uh, said some are better in proportion than others. This one's perhaps a little tall, even though it is a giraffe, and it is a little top heavy. So you have to be very careful with the spacing of the legs, otherwise it'll flop over. Uh, good use of the new ball and socket parts. That's very good indeed. Build time was an hour. Uh, we've got moving legs. Three position moving legs there. And that goes the same for this leg. And the rear legs as well. We've got the uh, neck. is pretty much do what you like with. More or less. And there you go. And it bends there. So we've got a pivot at the body, one up there, one up there so you can do pretty much what you want with that which is fortunate because it's a bit hard to uh, video this one because it's a tool so you can do anything really with that anything at all there's a bit of weight with the head construction and it's holding that at the moment fine so folks we've got this rather pleasant looking model with plenty of movement in the legs and in the neck and the head therefore but come to stage 9, which is putting the ears on, ear, get it, ear, oh no, stick to my day job, I will, don't worry, hear, hear, I hear you cry, uh, I shut up. <laughs> so we've got plenty of movement in the model, so it's got quite a bit of play value, but lack of standard bolts. There's plenty of spare 9.5mm bolts, so basically what I did, I pinched one of the 9.5mm uh, bolts from elsewhere and Swapped it with a nine and a half where you can't quite see it. And I can't remember where I did it now. And used it to finish it up there. Fortunately, there's no further need for standard bolts in the build. So, there was no recurrence of that. So, stage 11, we're putting the head together now. When we're putting these uh, brackets with the ears on to the side of the head. And you put a long bolt through. 19mm. Uh, I think that is. 3 quarter inch, roughly. Through there. But there's no washers fitted in board. Um, it might be a tight squeeze anyway with the socket there but it does mean that there is a gap and when you tighten uh, the bolt it pushes in, squeezes in, there pinches in the channel bearing part which is this U section part where I've got my finger in there now. Thus you can't put it in too tight because it deforms this quite a bit so hence why you might see these move a little bit in the video. When it comes to putting the legs together you will find, or at least in my instructions, that it says to use 9.5mm bolts here. They're not long enough, but there's enough spare 12mm in the set to get round it. So there you are. Reasonable looking giraffe. Plenty of movement. Let down by a couple of issues, and they are issues. Certainly the one in the instructions. Or in the design. Now this is the gazelle, at least I think it's a gazelle, as I've said before, it'd be nice if we had a little title to each model in the instructions. And uh, a bit of internet search and it looks like a gazelle to me. So, my least favourite model to be honest, it's um, a little too out of proportion I suppose, compared to some of the others, and okay yeah, they're not scale models are they? But. Um, I don't know why I seem to notice it more in this uh, build than the earlier ones, but the zinc part shown in the instruction book, in the actual instruction part, not the parts list, in the instruction part, they're very dark, and this is picky, yeah, I'll admit that, but they're essentially a totally different colour than the actual colour, as in the parts list, the inset parts list. Now, when I do these reviews and, and the builds, I've always got it in my mind of somebody, or, or at least in part, of somebody who has just been given a set for a present, uh, a treat, um, Christmas, birthday, whatever, and they've never seen Meccano before. And believe me, folks, there's plenty of people around like that. Now, I'm going off topic a little bit here. No surprise really, is there? Now, regulars and people who have been at this game for a while will have seen this model. The Evolution Crane. And I only bought this because it was cheap. They were selling them off. 
because the more I looked it, looked at it, it was like, God, doesn't that really, really come close to the L World plastic brick rubbish? Well, I was building that, and I was on my break at work doing it, and. Um, I'd had a bit of a break over the summer from building stuff. I got a bit fed up, to be honest. And uh, I'd started building that, and it's a nice-looking bit of stuff, really. The uh, the model is really, uh, really quite nice. Not without its little foibles with it, but that's for another video, of course. And there was a fairly new member of staff who hadn't seen me build any Meccano because I hadn't done any for something like six weeks, and she said, "What's that? Is that?" and said the L word, at which point I gave the, the look of death. If my laser eyes was working, that would have been it. She would have been toast. <laughs> anyway, uh, and I had to explain, and she'd never heard of it. I said, well, it's been going since 1898. Well, 1901, I suppose, really, but invented 1898. And she hadn't seen or heard of it. So there are plenty of people out there, folks, uh, through my experience, who uh, anybody sort of, well, 40, 45 and under, there's a good chance they would have never had it their se themselves. So you have to explain these things. And in relation to the parts and the colours, it is picky, the colours, you do not want anything that's going to give confusion to a youngster over parts. It's got to be easy. Kids... And indeed, nearly everybody want things done just like that now. They don't, can't be bothered to wait. They would, in some ways, they would sooner, for example, sit on um, on a settee playing a PlayStation game or other games consoles are available, of course, uh, and play a game of uh, football, say. Uh, I don't like that either. <laughs> uh, instead of going out and kicking the ball around. Now, there's many reasons why they can't go out, but we won't go into all that. But the bottom line is, it's something's got to be quite readily available. Now, when you're building some at first, that can't be the case, but you can make it as easy as possible. And maybe the different colours would say, oh, hang on a minute, that's a different part to what I've got here. Possibly? I don't know. I know that was a bit long-winded, folks, but I'm just trying to say that it's got to be done to make it as easy as possible for people who've never done these things to do them fairly easily. If it's easy, then more like more likely to get on with it and do another one, buy another one. And at the bottom line, from a business point of view, surely that's what Spin Master want. That's the main thing to make money. Like everybody's business. This probably goes for all the models, all the sets. I've probably mentioned it in the uh, set reviews. The zinc's a little thin, some are better than others, and the Meccano stamping, when it's there, can be a little thin as well, but it's not on all parts. It's on most, I think, on this this actual set, it was on most of the parts. But things like the channel bearing there, the paint's rubbed off a bit round the edges. So I don't know where that's been. It's like I can kick round the floor or something, I don't know. But this is a problem when you've got a lot of parts. Well, well, I say a lot of parts. A fair few parts in this case, all in one bag. Now, folks, these quick snaps, when they are used, you know, these pushing pins, when they are used in the right place for the right thing I don't really have too much of a problem with them yes I would prefer a nut and bolt they can sort of smooth the line of a model a little bit like the LaFerrari in part but uh, they are a little bit limited sometimes they fit really well and sometimes they don't here's one where it doesn't fit really well should be one in there told it's back on or spine if you like it does not it keeps falling out Plenty of spare nuts and bolts in this build, so I used a nut and bolt. Now, I can appreciate, like, if you're using, uh, I don't know, say there's a clearance issue, and the flat head of this quick snap would uh, help you get a part in place or parts in place and not catch something, something like that. Smooth the bodywork of a car or something like that, perhaps. There's no real need for it to be there uh, at all. No real need for it to be there at all. Uh, and then... I suppose, really, a better place for one would be at the end here, so the tail could actually wag. It doesn't on this one. Now, folks, I normally don't improve the set 
models until it's a failure completely or at a later date if the set build uh, is okay. In this case I did alter it en route as it were and uh, I must admit this uh, I said this is my least favourite model or least favourite build uh, it probably doesn't do quite as much or at least as built it doesn't uh, as, it, as it was shown to be built doesn't do as much but in this case and, and I do apologise if I seem to be a bit unfair of these little niggles that pop up. We shouldn't have any niggles at all or issues. Yes they can happen but there seem to be a few too many at the moment and I blame the LaFerrari set for putting me in this well let's be honest sort of mood uh, because that was such an abomination. I, I, um, I, You could say I'm looking for little niggles so you know whatever I say have a look at them and make your own mind up I suppose. But anyway I did improve this one. The set shows the face or like the sides of the head there fitted with one bolt all the way through but all there is in there are these one inch by well, the quarter inch angle brackets or half inch angle brackets there and of course it don't take a lot to pinch those in yet there's plenty of spare standard length bolts in this set so I'll just put one standard length bolt there and one standard length bolt there and they sort of act as eyes as well uh, and it's, you could argue it's neater with having the same uh, head having the bolted on both sides instead of a head and a nut uh, it's uh, probably structurally more sound because you've got although it's only a one bolt fixing you've got two instead of one uh, another improvement is the neck the set model shows uh, a standard nut uh, on there, which means the only way to move this means the bolt's going to come undone. Yet there's plenty of spare nylock nuts, so I added one. So at least now we've got a little bit of movement there. Now this is a bit annoying because it's such a simple way of doing things. I mean, we've got um, leg movements, right? We've got leg movements in pretty much the same way as the others. Uh, the rear as well, both sides, but nothing at the head and nothing at the tail. So, adding that nylock nut there, we've got head movement now. So, I suppose the the play value of these models is uh, perhaps a little limited. Um, I'm thinking of doing a bit of a diorama with me little Land Rover, although even the gazelle is bigger <laughs> than the Land Rover. So it'll look a little bit weird, but uh, ah, different way of doing it. So, by far really, that is my least favourite model mainly because the build could have been so easily so much better now here we have the cheetah as I said before at least I think it's the cheetah it's a little bit wide for a cheetah uh, if I was honest it's not very sleek but again made from the same part so not bad we've got pretty much full movement of the legs, well almost, uh, pivots here and here and the rear legs here and here. The tail or the second half pivots, now one of the things I did do was put a nylock nut on here for the tail. Uh, to be honest there ain't much point in that because the curvature of the socket, of the ball and socket part sticks out a little bit from the main structure of it therefore catches the bodywork here so there ain't a lot of movement anyway so it's one of them things that yeah there's plenty of spare parts to do it but th there ain't much gain to it the tail does move at the bottom end of course uh, at the far end I must admit it's a little disconcerting with this one and the elephant doing things around the back end you never know what's going to happen <laughs> um, I think this was less than an hour build this one, uh, 50 minutes, but overall if you say an hour for each one really, um, that's that's all it takes, so they're a fairly quick build, yet on the whole, maybe except from the Gazelle, fairly satisfying builds, some more satisfying than others. Uh, issues with this one then, well, issues, <sighs> to be honest I think the only real major one because at least on this one they've thought about it a bit more with spacers. Uh, for example, 
in the head there we've got plenty of spaces where are we there we are to take up the slack and therefore it does pull in a little bit but not a lot of the um, in this case the channel bearing there which there's no paint mission on this one but the uh, again they seem to want to just use the quick snaps it feels when there's no real need when there's parts available to not use those the instructions state use the shorter uh, quick snap where we are there now that's all very well but the one they say use the 11 point is it 25 millimeter is not long enough these plastic parts are a fair bit thicker than standard parts and that just they just won't reach they won't, they won't bite at all now there is one longer one in use and I've left it or used it and left it in just to show you the problem so I used that one longer one which is about 13.75 mil I think uh, don't quote me on that but it's a longer one anyway and you'll find nowadays it's the one with the nut moulded head on not the flat head that fits lovely and snug in there lovely and snug indeed but there's only one in the set so there are plenty of spare 9.5 mil bolts and as you can see I've put one in that side and probably once I feel like it I'll put one in that side as well it's alright using the quick snaps but use them when there's a good reason to use them I suppose if they make millions of them they are damn sight cheaper than making a bolt but use them where it's necessary uh, where it's an improvement over the nut and bolt for whatever reason that may be um, very good news for the cat the cheetah and the elephant they are downloaded instructions a uh, bit of a negative though first and I'm, I, I do apologize it seems to be I'm going on about negatives I'll just point out what I see how I feel about them when I come to search on the Meccano website for the instructions I just put in search by uh, I think it's brand so I click on just Meccano on the list and have a look through couldn't find this set at all so I had to put the number in off the set which you've got a choice you've got keyword choice I think it's brand choice they call it and the uh, reference number this come up then fine and um, there's two files one with the first three models that you get in the instruction book and the second one B is for this one and the elephant now I have used these in the past these instructions not for this set but uh, I can't even remember what set it was uh, I think it may have been though the multi-models dumper truck set from about 2013-2014 great set really but the definition of the uh, parts when you zoomed in to say 100% or even a little bit more than that was awful very um, well not exactly blocky but straight lines weren't straight lines they were all like zigzags but although it's just these minuscule they're like a straight line become a dotted line if you like and they were pretty poor now with these very good indeed you can zoom in like uh, I, I didn't have I had a I think it's a 7 inch screen on my uh, tablet and I think it was uh, the most I ever zoomed in was and most of it was just playing around not actually doing anything but I would say Oh, knocking on for 150% and the image is still fine. And uh, a little, little downside. Now this may be able to be solved if I knew how to work the tablet better. <laughs> but how do you measure, say, the correct bolt length on the one-to-one -one diagrams on the downloaded instructions on a screen? Because every time near enough I touch the screen, I alter the magnification. Now you can do it if you're careful. You basically set it at 100. Now maybe you can fix that. I don't know instead of having it zoom in or out. I don't know. Perhaps you could set it then switch the touch screen control off perhaps. A bit of a faff maybe. But you can do it. You may find that it moves a little bit. And the image goes a bit bigger, a bit smaller maybe. A little awkward for that but not too bad. As I say on the whole the definition of them was very good indeed. Towards the end there's a couple of bolts inside the body, inside the abdomen up here. Uh, that's a bit awkward to get the spanner on properly, in fact you can't really, you have to do it slightly on, not fully on. Which is awkward and in some ways uh, it actually tells you to fit this on first before 
this at the back. Now I've changed it to a nylon nut. Uh, um, yeah, I would say it's easier to. Okay, you can move the legs out of the way, but put that on first, then fit the tail to the body. Overall, um, a little odd looking because it is pretty wide. Uh, plenty of movement in the head, not too bad at all there. But if you look at the front, it's uh, uh, well. I suppose if, doc if you're a Doctor Who fan, I mean, it's a good basis for a, a K9, I suppose. But uh, yeah, okay. Slightly too much out of proportion to be one of the best models, but overall not too bad. Here we have the elephant, the last model, and again one of the downloaded instructions again very good definition uh, parts on this one zinc wise very good indeed actually it does vary a little bit I suppose uh, over the sets but this one's quite shiny I'm just standing here looking at it now it's quite shiny but out of all the models this is the best one in proportion I think it's uh, it's not a scale model is it but it's got the right sort of proportions the Okay, probably a smidgen tall, but the head goes well with the body to an extent. Yes, the back end should stick out a bit more, a bit like mine does. Ha! Um, but it is a good model. Again, it's uh, it's an hour build. Uh, I think it's less than an hour. Uh, but all of them, really. If you can... Oh, I'm fairly well experienced in mechanics. I'm not the most experienced out there. There's some brilliant models that I can even contemplate building because I just ain't got the imagination or I just ain't got the parts but these took on the whole between 50 minutes and an hour or just over and as usual there's my notes so if you can make any of these models in an hour and a half you're doing all right this one is the best it's quite well, it's quite cute but it does does represent the creature quite well we have the trunk, made up out of the uh, spinal-like ball and sockets. It's awkward to show sometimes. Let's 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 do it up there like that. Right, car wash anybody? So, if you do turn it a bit too tight, it does look a bit too stepped. But yeah, you you've got the trunk can move. Tusks quite ni nicely represented. Um, this was done as the instructions, but I dare say really those ought to be uh, angled out a little bit like that. Uh, I suppose really, with especially sort of tan colour, you could almost say it's a woolly mammoth, couldn't you? Which uh, go with the dinosaur sets, and I suppose. But uh, I dare say I'm not quite in the right period for dinosaurs and woolly mammoths and all that. But there we are. Moving legs, uh, just like. Uh, Try and do it so you can actually see it all. It's pointless doing it, isn't it, really? So at the bottom and at the top, the rear the same. The tail doesn't move, but uh, there's room for an eye lock nut. I think there's some left as well. And uh, it is a little front heavy, perhaps, but we do have a bit of movement in the head. Up and down is great. Side to side is is more of a twist. Sorry, old chap, I'm pulling your trunk there, am I? So, yeah, that's me. I, I did like the Rhino when I built it, but when I, once I've built this one, it's uh, it's more in proportion than the Rhino. Rhino's a tad too tall, because I suppose you could adjust that. Uh, Meccano is almost infinitely variable, isn't it? You know, not quite infinitely, but yeah, it's getting on for it. So, this one is definitely my favourite. Uh, it has about as much play value as all the others. The uh, manoeuvring of the head isn't as good as, say, the giraffe. But it um, it's not bad at all. It's a bit too small for what I was going to do with this yeah, sort of a diorama. Uh, I'll probably still do that, but uh, I'll give you a rough idea. And here is my very rough idea. Um, it's a little cramped, isn't it, on this uh, display, but... The idea is to build some diorama with my little Land Rover. This is a freelance model based on a V8. Well, 
I say based on a V8, it's so loosely based, I can't really say that, but yeah, it's got a dummy V8 engine in it, and uh, it's built um, to go up the dam when I finish it, but uh, I say V8, it's only a dummy, and it was the easiest one to replicate with uh, interesting detail, so uh, that's why it's a V8. The winch is far too big, but it's been built to um, go up the dam. Anyway. That is for another video. Uh, it's far too small Land Rover um, for any of these models really. <laughs> the cat's about the same size of it. Uh, but that's the idea. Just to do something a little different. And uh, whenever that will be, I don't know. There's that many projects going on and some have been going on for years. Or, well, yeah, a couple of years I suppose. So, that's the idea. Anyway, there we are. The five models from the Meccano Maker System Serengeti Safari set. Not a bad set overall. Let down a little bit it is true by in the main the Gazelle really. Uh, the others not too bad at all. Uh, best one gotta be the Elephant closely followed by the Rhino I think. Bye for now.